Welcome back to Christian Questions on News Talk 104.7 WXLM. Our subject this morning, Is There Eternal Fire in Hell? To be a part of our program, call 860-442-9956. That's 442-WXLM. And Jonathan, we're going to go through a few of the uses of this word, Gehenna. Uh, and we are looking at it as a symbol of complete and utter total destruction. And we're getting that hint from that Revelation scripture that told us that the lake of fire is the second death. Okay, So we're, we're not jumping to some conclusion out of the air. We're using, A, the physical evidence of what it was. And the definition in Revelation. Right, and we're using the, the evidence that when a typical individual in Jerusalem or in Israel would have heard of that valley, they would have seen it as a place where stuff is destroyed, burnt up. Okay, it's gone. There's, there's nothing left. Let's read Matthew 10:28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, there's a number of things there, Jonathan, we want to touch on very quickly. First of all, this is Jesus speaking, and he's saying, don't be afraid of the people around you. They, they could take your life. Yes, they can, but they can't take your future life. You are, you are with me you are being given this gospel, you're being given, being given something special, only be afraid of him who can destroy. It doesn't say torment, it doesn't say torture, it says who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. And that perfectly fits, because what happened to something that was thrown in there? It was destroyed. It was destroyed. Okay, let's go on to the next scripture. Matthew twenty three fifteen. Woe well unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land, to one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Okay, the child of the Valley of Hinnom, the child of Gehenna. So what he's, now here, this is Jesus' last attempt to communicate with the Pharisees. They are, they are this close, my fingers are real close together because we're on the radio, they are this close <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to crucifying him. Okay, they're, they're, they're working their plans out, and Jesus is telling them very harshly at this point about their hypocrisy, about how they're, 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 they're coming across as such wonderful spiritual leaders, and yet they're, they're bringing people under their wing and just misleading them grossly toward destruction. And that's a very sobering thought from Jesus. Matthew twenty three thirty three, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? You say, aha, there it is. Well, look up the word damnation, and what you're going to see is it means a separating, a sundering, a separation, a trial, or a contest, or a selection. It is a period of time, and we're going to get into that. A judgment is the third definition. And that's really what, what Jesus is saying is you're going to be judged, and the further you walk down this pathway, the harder your judgment is going to be. And doesn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a parent talking to your children, wouldn't you tell them the same thing? The further you go down that pathway, the harder it is to get back. You're right. So there is nothing strange here. Jesus is being very forceful in his, in his uh, examination of these things. Um, Jonathan, in the interest of time, because we're in the last segment here, let's go down to um, the, the, the middle of the next page, the Hebrews 6 scripture. Because we've been talking about we've been talking about this Gehenna place as being a place uh, that that symbolizes complete destruction, and there are places in the New Testament that help us understand it. Hebrews six four to six for it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, since on their own they are crucifying again the Son of God and are holding him up to contempt. Now, Jonathan, this is a sobering scripture, because it's saying that it's impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened. Okay. Now, you can't stop the scripture there, because you're going to get a misrepresentation of what it really means. It, it describes what it really means. They have tasted the heavenly gift, they've shared in the Holy Spirit, they have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come. They have had multiple spiritual blessings been given to them. They've been given the gift of God's influence working in their lives, you know, directing their lives. That's, that's powerful stuff. It is. That's not something that's handed out arbitrarily. So this is a, a true Christian. Yes, a real true Christian who, who, who 
is, is called to a higher purpose, who sets aside their, their, their earthly ways to live a godly life in sacrifice, wanting to do the will of God through Jesus, not their own will. And this is someone who completely denies it. So it's not somebody who just goes to church. So this is someone that went bad after yeah. receiving all the gifts. Right, and of, there's a whole God. list. And saying you can't restore them. And so what ends up happening, well, you go back to all those scriptures about destruction. That's what happens. And so the end result of all of this is complete, total, utter destruction for the few, and I say few. Now, you know, we're talking about, I don't know how many billions of people have lived in, in, in the history of mankind, 30 billion people or 40 or whatever it is, I don't know. But I think there are few that end up in that category. And the massive, massive, massive majority end up in a category of life. And we'll get to that in much more detail next week. Um, let's just take a, a, another detour. There's so many directions we can go, but with just a few minutes, we can't go all of them. <laughs> so let's take a look at something that happens with the angels, because see, judgment is not just limited to the human race. Next, next scripture. Jude 1, 6 and 7. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay, now there's a couple of things here that I think are very important to try to put things in perspective. And this is actually setting the table in some ways for, for next week. Uh, first of all, the angels which kept not their first estate. W what is he talking about here? Well, these are fallen angels that, that followed Satan and made him their leader and left God's ways. They are under judgment. And it says that they are held. It gives an interesting description. An everlasting chains un under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And this is an important uh, description because what this does is this puts things in a, in a perspective that tells us they too are going to be judged. And until they're judged, they are, they, are, they are in darkness. In other words, they can't see the light of God's word. They're in darkness. And they're held until the judgment of the great day. Okay, so it's saying there's going to be a judgment for them as well as for human beings. And then it says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the city's about them, we know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, fire and brimstone destroyed the city. That's right. And it talks about suffering the vengeance of, and it uses the word, eternal fire. And you say, well, there you have it. Sodom and Gomorrah suffered the vengeance of eternal fire. Well, hold on a minute, because Jesus himself says in Matthew 11:24. here's what he says. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. So he is saying that the land of Sodom has a chance. And they have a judgment upon them. So, and, and they, now think about it. The land of Sodom was destroyed for their wickedness. Right. They were, dis they were wiped out. But they will be resurrected and judged. Those are the words of Jesus. Yeah. And so there is the, the great day of judgment. Now, there are other scriptures, and they're not here, but I think it's, it's, I meant to put them here, and I don't know why I didn't, but you know how it goes. <laughs> Jesus, in, in, in certain instances when he was healing, uh, going back to the angels held in chains of darkness, um, there was an instance where he, where he, he um, releases the, the boy from the, 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 the grip of, of the, uh, the possession, okay. the demon possession. Yeah. And the demon says to Jesus, are you here to judge me before the time? Or don't judge me before the time? 